use over 100 frames. Exactly the same setup, except instead of a shadow capture just on the floor, I have just a little infinity curve. Okay, um, and that guy just rotates. Okay, so that's all that's happening there. Exactly the same setup as what we had in cycles. Okay, however, um, if I look through my camera, in if we were to do it in Eevee, however, um, first of all, we need to change the rendering engine to Eevee. Okay, everything, technically speaking, works. So if you set it up with all your lights and everything in cycles, you can switch it to Eevee, but there are settings that you do need to change. Okay, so particularly with the lights. The shaders are more or less similar. Okay, so for instance, all that I have on this guy is literally just a gray principal shader with the roughness set to full. Okay, um, that's not supposed to be on. Um, and if I were to now add in a just a normal light, an area light particularly, um, and switch to this render button, not the look dev button, the render button. Okay, um, let's put it out over there. But as you can see, um, this is now what Eevee thinks it should look like, which isn't bad. Okay, um, and it's very responsive as you can see. Um, but there are different settings that we do need to change. Okay, now just in terms of the the scene settings, there's really only one thing you do need to do. Okay, so if I go to my scene settings over there, my render settings tab. Okay, um, those I'm just I'll talk about those just now. The only thing, well, I said one. There's maybe two things. The only thing you really need to do is in the shadows tab over the, here. Okay, there's a check block over here for soft shadows. Okay. And you need to activate that button. Okay, so that button needs to be on. Soft shadows up there. You can also say high bit depth, okay, if you want to. Um, I haven't really seen that it makes much of a difference, okay. And by default, this cube size map size over there, by default is 512. I just set it one higher just to make sure that the shadows are nice and soft, okay. Um, then the rest of it all happens on the light itself. Okay, so if you make a light in cycles, right, and you open it up or switch it to EV, um, you're going to have these, well, all the properties change. Okay, so lights in EV aren't exactly the same as lights in cycles. But the one thing that is different um, is what we need to set up over here in the shadow tab. Also, it uses a different value for the, the brightness of the light. So here it uses a power setting in, excuse me, watts. Okay, so if you think about your light bulbs at home, how many watts they use. Um, and there's, there's some things we can set over there. One thing that this size, if you scale the light here, in cycles, it does something here, it does very little. The only effect you can really see is if you look at the shadow on his like his body over there, um, it just goes a bit. But it doesn't affect the softness of the light as it does in cycles. Okay, so if I were to just position this in front of my character, so for some reason this scene is rotated the wrong way around, but I'm just going to ignore it for now. Okay, so for instance, if I were to do that, okay, and put that light there. So this light I've just made, I haven't changed any of its settings. Okay, immediately you can see there are some things that are slightly weird. Okay, for instance, right by his feet, the shadow is a bit see-through. Okay, and the shadow is quite sharp. Okay, even though it is a like slightly soft. It isn't a soft shadow, if I can put it that way. So I'm just trying to make my phone keep quiet. Okay, um, so we need to go and just update these settings over here. Okay, now if you change this size as well over there, uh, it does make a small difference. Um, and I remember someone asked last week if we can, in this lighting setup, where we um, I'm using instead of the, the same lighting setup that I did where I have from the sides and from the top, I change it a little bit so that it's slightly more of a mix of the studio lighting and the three-point lighting. Okay, so it's also mainly three lights. But as I did last time, I'm going to warm up the one just a little bit. Okay, um, and then the lights, uh, the shadow settings over here is where we start getting things happening. Okay, so first of all, this clip start, okay, if we drag that down to zero, you'll see all of a sudden everything goes black. And if you drag it up, you see your shadow like disappears completely. Okay, so this is 
I'd love to be able to explain exactly what it's doing. However, I won't, and I can't. Okay. Uh, the softness here is the one that we want to look at. So if I, for instance, it's set to 3, if I increase that to, say, 8, and leave that to render, this shadow at the back here is going to get a lot softer. Okay, and that's the one thing that we really want. Okay, um, then these settings over here, the, the bias, the bleed bias and the exponent, um, again, you can tweak them and see what they do. Okay, but it's mostly, um, again, you, you change it and see if it does anything that you like or not. Okay, now what I can tell you that it does do is it basically clips your shadows. So this exponent over there is if you look around over there where it should be dark, if you pull this down too much, it's going to make those shadows go away or make them come back. So for instance, his ear as well, which should technically speaking be in a shadow over there, um, same thing is going to happen. Okay, so if we adjust this all the way down, then his ear is going to be lit up. Um, if we pull this up, then we're going to notice that those shadows are going to start coming back. Okay, supposedly. <laughs> Okay, so it's basically to play with those kind of ideas. Did go away just now. I'll look at there the actual lights that are set up in the scene, and I'll show you how those work as well. Um, and then the other one is this contact shadows, which is literally the shadows around his feet. So where the actual object makes contact with the ground, uh, that is is what that's about. Okay, now you can also see it started making this little artifact in his stomach over there. Okay, and we'll show you that now that is this bias over there, I believe. Um, but here, if we play with this slider over there, that distance, you can see what effect that has on the actual shadows. Okay, so we can set that to a point where we're happy with it. So I'm going to make it say 5. Um, the softness, again, we can soften those shadows up a lot, okay, or not. But generally speaking, since these shadows are very closely cast on my object, I'm not going to make them too soft. Um, the one thing with, with EV is that your shadows, well, with 3D, in fact, is your shadows is what gives you your realism to a certain degree. Um, and specifically with EV, so it's very easy to like get bad shadows in EV, um, and that's what's going to make it look terrible. Okay, this bias, as I mentioned, if you look at like the, those artifacts on your stomach, if you increase this, it'll go away, but it also basically shrinks your shadows. So you see the higher I put it, the shadows on his cheek disappear as well. Okay, so it's like a fine line between artifact and just getting it to go away, um, but keeping the rest of the shadows as well. And then this thickness again is basically like a multiplier on your shadows. Um, so you can, if you see we turn this down, it's going to go away by his feet, and if you turn it up, it's going to be a lot bigger. So that I basically see as like a um, like pushing and pulling of the shadows edges, so fading them out and in. Um, so if you fade it out too much, then it's going to go away. However, having said that, um, that is basically all that we need to do. We, but all we need to do is adjust the shadows of our objects. Okay, so if I quickly look at the lights that I've set up already, I don't want to spend too much time on this, obviously. Um, I've got my three-point lighting set up over here. Okay. So those three lights. So I've got my key light over there. Well, sorry, that's not my key light. I've changed it a little bit because of the background that I like. It's nice rendering out the background. Now, the reason why I didn't do it when we did our cycle setup was because it's very grainy. Okay, If we do a nice studio setup, it's very grainy. And to render it out properly without grain takes quite a while. Okay, Here, we don't have that problem. Okay. Um, so that's why we basically just left it out and put in the background and a shadow afterwards. Here, we don't have that issue. Okay, but that also means that I can't really have a light directly behind them because then it makes a weird, well, it lights the infinity curve strangely. So I think this is my key light. Okay, so that's basically the light I just showed you guys now. All nice soft shadows everywhere. Then the next one is a bit of a full. Okay, and again, I have done the same color thing here as well. Um, also, the key light is, say, 25 strong, then the fill is about half of that strong, so it's about 10-ish, okay? Um, and then I really just duplicated that uh, fill light for my rim light, but the rim light I put on this side to basically light up there, okay? So I didn't put it behind him because obviously then it lights up the infinity curve strangely, um, so I just put it there, okay? Um, and again, the settings on these are all pretty much what I showed you. 
Okay, um, so you can go and literally copy these settings. That's, I mean, there's nothing much to it. Just basic, basically increasing the softness and then looking at the way that it calculates those two. Okay, um, if I could explain it better, then I'll, I'll do some research and see exactly what those do. Okay, um, and then just to light it up a bit, we don't really have that much indirect illumination in, in EV, not that much. Um, and then I just wanted to light it up a little bit more, so I basically put um, three lights just above him, okay, that basically gives a tiny little room there, but if I just zoom out over here, you'll see. It's basically just three lights coming from the top, so that's like the same idea we had from our studio setup. Um, you could have one long one. I mean, I just had one and I wanted, I duplicated it. Um, and those don't cast shadows at all. So I've turned off the shadow casting on those three. So it's really just taking it from that, right, to that. So it just lights up the background a little bit more as well. Okay, now the one thing we need to be aware of with Eevee is that we still technically render out our scene. However, where, where Cycles calculates it accurately and f like how it is in the real world, Eevee sacrifices some of that realism for speed. Okay, so we still render this out. So if I press F12 there, and we wait and see how long that takes, it should take about 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds a frame. Um, however, I have set this to be some silly size. I think this is rendering 4K. Um, I was testing it to see how far we could push it. Um, hello? I just want to make sure that everything is set correctly. Um, output. Okay, yeah, so there don't have to be 4K. I'm going to take it down to 50%. Okay, and that should technically speaking, if everything is set correct. Oh, there we go, my lights went on. My whole collection's uh, light. Ah, oh, render visibility was off. Okay, so here we go. Um, and you don't see it rendering, it just pops into the frame. There we go, okay. Um, which I think for the speed that you get and the result that you get is not bad. Okay, particularly since it's just a shaded turnaround, it's not textured and all of that, I think this looks amazing. Okay, um, so I think that's pretty cool. There are um, the render settings that you can set, particularly like the actual sampling. So that was set to 16 samples. I mean, if you made that 64, uh, I just want to see. That was five seconds, almost six seconds a frame. Okay, so I mean, where you would be rendering for like a day or two on this on, at home, I mean, it will take like an hour, maybe two hours to do. So you can do it the morning with your hand in. Um, so it does make it very cool for this kind of thing where we're not looking at extreme realism, where we just want to get a nice render out. Okay, this isn't bad, and it's not going to be grainy. It's going to look cool, um, which means you can spend more time. So he, this was double and I quadrupled the samples, um, and it looks good. Okay, it looks really good. So for like a really little quick render, real time, to a certain degree, it doesn't look bad. Okay, now the two other things that I quickly want to just uh, show you, and again, those are the same things we have covered, but now just how to approach it now. Um, the UV view, so the little checkerboard view. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, if I just select him, okay, to what I would do for that, okay, so that we can get it done as quickly as possible. Okay, um, so basically you set up your gray view and you render it out, same as always. Okay, so you go here into your output, you say where you want to save it, and then you say render animation over there. Control F12, okay. Then to do the gray version, okay, and to get that done quickly as well, um, I've got the same material that I had in, so here, the same checker node, which is over there. Now, if I just plug that, uh, connect that either into a, an emission node or if I press control shift and click on it while the node wrangler is active. Remember that node wrangler add-on? If you don't have it, just go into your preferences and enable it. Um, but what that's going to do is basically put that on my character. And then to get rid of all the other stuff, what you can do is just delete the materials on it. So in EV, if there isn't a material on it, it just turns out black. Okay, so for everything else, let me just save this before I break it. 
Okay, for everything else, so save it, delete the materials and everything else, and then you render this one out. And that should take seconds. Okay, black, white, whatever. Uh, and the lights, you need to turn the lights off as well. So I forgot about that. So let's just turn the lights off as well. So outliner, turn the render and view visibility of our lights off. Oh, well, that seems to be fine. Okay, you don't need to make everything else black. You can just turn the lights off. Okay, since this is an emission material, um, whatever you want the checkerboard to come on, render it on that as well. So if you want, say now, the the leaves or your skirt or whatever not to have it on, uh, then just delete the material on that. So for instance, my leaf, which is over here, I can go there and just delete it. Boom, and that'll look black. Okay. Okay, then this, again, if we now were to press F12 on this, uh, that should really not take very long at all. Um, there we go, four seconds as well. That's not bad. Um, so that would be, what, four times 100? So I'm too lazy to do the math. Um, 400 seconds, which is probably just longer than five, six minutes, seven minutes. Um, okay, and then the only other trick, the wireframe that you've been struggling with up until now. We found a good enough solution, which was um, using the freestyle renderer, the, which it's all in the other video that I posted just online, you guys can go check it out, the stuff we did on Monday. However, I found a way that we can really speed this up a lot, okay, that we can literally just capture it up. Because that, again, uh, we can do it here using Eevee and just render out the, the freestyle render lines on top. But that takes our 12 second render and makes it like a two minute render, okay, which again defeats the point that we can just render the whole thing out. Okay, so what we do is select your whole scene, okay. Um, particularly, you don't have to select the lights, but everything else. Okay, so if I turn just the lights visibility off, I do, you do need the camera and you do need your character. Okay, so if I go and select all of those things, um, okay, all of those. Copy that. Okay, it's going to say 13 objects, uh, copy 13 selected objects. Then go into Blender 2.7, whatever. Okay, the reason why we can't do this in 2.8 is because there's a bug that makes it ugly. Okay, go into Old Blender. Okay, select everything. Delete that. Control V to paste your scene back into here. Okay, now. This is where the, the clever bit comes. Okay, um, what we want to do is we want to turn on the wireframe on our character only. Okay, to do that, select your character or everything that you want the wireframe on. Okay, so his clothes and his props and everything else as well, if you wish to. So select your character, go into the object settings over there. Okay, turn on the wire button, turn on the draw all edges button. Okay. And then go into your modifier, your subdivision surface, or your multi rays, and make sure that you have this optimal display button on. Okay, if you have that on, it's only going to show the wireframe on the faces of your object where your actual mesh is. Okay, so not the subdivided mesh like this. This isn't great, that's what we want. Okay, then what we can do is we can, in this Blender, if we press that little screen capture button over there, it's going to render the current image. Okay, there. However, we don't want everything else. So what we want is just this wireframe nicely rendered out. Okay. Um, so to do that, all that I need to do is just make everything else white. Okay. So what I can do is go into my material view mode and then put a white material on everything, just a white constant. Okay. So again, I'm going to select just a thing. I'm going to go delete whatever that is. This is even set to Blender render. This should probably be in circles. I don't know if that's important or not. Um, anyway, give it a emission material. Yes, it does have to be in circles. Emission material. Okay. If you go back into your material view mode, you'll see that that is now white. Okay. Um, and then what I do to make the next bit work is just go back here. Select everything. Make sure that you have your object that you created the material on selected last. Okay, so that it is your active object. Then say Control L and just say Make links to materials. Boom. Okay. Now everything's going to have this material on. Okay, so if I check that, 
and this, everything's going to have that Y as a constant on. Okay, so now if I go into my into my camera view and set it to material view over there, everything's going to be white, and then I just need to turn off the display of my grid, so the floor grid, and those lines, and also just for safety, turn on this only render. Okay, don't do that. Just move the 3D cursor out of the way. No, that, that, that needs to be on. Why? It's weird. Um, why does any render break? Oh, any render makes it like there. Okay, so that's not supposed to be on. Good point. Um, and then the hair. Um, I'm just going to hide the hair because I still want the wireframe of the head itself. So I'm going to hide the hair over there. Um, and that is basically the picture that I want. Okay, so if I press this button over there, it's going to save that out, Okay, which is perfect. Now, since I copy and pasted it, my animation should be exactly the same. Okay, So to capture this out, I just go into my render output, and I change where it's saving it to somewhere. Um, captured wire. Okay, and now where we were sitting at like a minute of frame last time, if we now click that button over there, to set this to 100, um, it's then going to go and do that, which is much faster than anything else. Okay, now just to show you, the reason why we can't do this in 2.8 is for the following reason. Okay, so if we, it's easier in 2.8 because all that you do is you select your mesh, you go into its uh, options and you also say wireframe, okay, which is there. And then you just go into the shading and say flat. It makes everything else white. So that's easier. But if we were to capture this image out, um, if we go and it's over here, view, viewport render image, um, it does this. And it gives us this really ugly line, uh, which isn't great. Okay, so just be, and this is a, a glitch that I think they're still figuring out. So because this is how it saves it here, and this is how it saves it in in cycles, ugh, not in cycles, in 2.79, um, that's the only reason. So it is a slight workaround, but I mean, it's going to take you 10 minutes to do a wireframe, whereas it would have taken you a couple of hours. Okay, um, and then the... The, the, the compositing is exactly the same as what I showed you guys in the last video. Okay, the last video is on YouTube, so you can go and check it out there. There we go. You wipe and stuff. Um, and that's it. Any questions about that? Hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, which I think is. It's going to make certain things a lot easier, so particularly little things like character turnarounds and, well, shaded character turnarounds. Um, yes. Over here? Yeah. You just click on them and you pull them out. Remember, it's a point seven nine, you can buy a cut. Yeah, you can still, okay. I think. Um, yeah, whatever I did there, did it. Um, I'll drag him through it. I think so. Um, but yeah, that's going to make things a lot easier. Um, and also, if you select one of these and press M, I believe it mutes them. So then it just does something else. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'll just now in the break, I'll just go and get the actual export that's on my computer in the office. Um, of then what this looks like if you then have it all rendered out and everything. Oh, the only other thing is if you are doing, if you have hair on your character, um, then the button you do need to click over there, and this hair is that strip button, not the strand button. And the difference is, if I can show you, if it's on the strand button, you see it doesn't take into consideration the thickness of the hair, but if it's on strip, it does. Okay. So for our purpose here, this is going to be great. Okay, so the last thing 
Um, you can also uh, activate I mean, occlusion over there, which um, will do something. What it does particularly, um, you know what ambient occlusion is, it's where um, ambient light gets occluded because two surfaces are close to each other, so the light can't get there. So for instance, in the corner of the room, there's going to be less light that gets there just because it, there's the walls in the way. So wherever there's a contact shadow, it's the contact shadow. Um, wherever there's an object touching another object right in that groove, it's going to get darker and darker and darker and darker uh, because less light can get there because it bounces off the objects in the way. Okay. Um, so it will make your like little creases and stuff a little bit darker as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and then that, I believe, is it. Okay, so that will make your ability to do this a lot quicker and a lot faster. Okay, um, any questions on that? Yes, no, 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 okay, good. Okay, cool, well, that's good. Um, I hope that, um, well, yeah, that's quite exciting, actually. Um, it does look pretty good. Let's just open this again. Can you give us a zero I like this. Um, yeah, he can. That's literally, um, I think, very just black even. I think maybe there's no refractions of that kind of thing, so if they see through, they those are just like reflective, and that's just white. So it's just reflecting. But yes, you can be more than welcome to. Okay. It does make it look a little bit nicer. Cool. Get your stuff out. I want to come.